from PRX. Friends beyond binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Oh boy, there was a band that once said it's time to, I think they said it's time uh, to slow it down. Uh, it's time to cool it down and slow it down and warm it up. Uh, uh, like, so I'm going to cool it down. I'm going to slow it down. You don't have to watch out because it's going to be full of pointless meanders and superfluous tangents. But yeah, I'm going to be slowing things down here because you're this. Oh, this is sleep with me. The podcast that's here to put you to sleep. I was thinking about, uh, old eighties music and, uh, then all of a sudden, when I said old 80s music, menudo popped in my head, but not the food menudo. Uh, but anyway, so um, uh, welcome to Sleep With Me if you're new. It's a podcast to put you to sleep, but really it's a podcast that takes your mind off of stuff and keeps you company, that cuts through whatever's keeping you awake, uh, that's your friend in the deep dark night, that takes away some of that loneliness or it creates a friendly atmosphere where you could kind of relax. I'm like your boring, uh, odd, a little bit odd friend, obviously. And and for some of you, like I have refer- pop culture references that are ob- obscure at best and definitely dated. I would say like uh, that music probably has aged like a, like a wine has, a, I don't know, maybe like fine wine. I've not listened to Menudo in a while, but I will try to listen to some soon. Uh, but anyway, yeah, if you're new, by the way, this is a, this show is very different. It does take a few episodes to get used to because I'm, I'm like a friend, a, a new friend. But first, you know, like rarely do you become some friends with someone right away, especially in the context of me telling you a story to put you to sleep. So I'm more here to apply for the role. So you say, okay, well, kind of, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about you. And I say, that's exactly right. So uh, maybe I'll talk about the genesis of my nickname, Uncle Baby, and how that applies to sleep podcast coming up. Because I did tell my niece, that I'm sure I've talked about how my her, my nieces my nieces and nephews call me Uncle Baby. Uh, but, uh, it, like, uh, she just started listening to the podcast. I don't want to keep her up though, but, uh, the, you know, Daniel, Teddy, Anita, Alex, I just spent time with them. So, uh, hi, Anita, you be pro- make sure to fall asleep right after I'm done talking about this. But so welcome to sleep with me structurally. I'll be, oh, but first I gotta, I'll be back, Anita. First I gotta talk about some other stuff. So this is a podcast uh, that's here to take your mind off stuff. So structurally, the show is very different. It does take some getting used to, like I said. It is very intentional, which I'll explain later. And if you're looking for a different version of the show, you know, we have a great subscription at Sleep With Me Plus. We have a referral program where you could earn ad-free episodes by referring people to the show. You can also subscribe right in most podcast apps or in Apple Podcasts. They have their own subscription. But for most people, they like this, the structure of this show uh, as it is. But you could kind of see as you become a regular listener what's going to work best for you. But at first, yeah, this is our little welcoming part. Then there's going to be support. That means that there's over 600 episodes that you can listen to that are ad-supported, no cost to you. But then after the support is a long, meandering intro, which this is almost becoming of itself, uh, where I go on and on and on. Then there's support. Then there'll be a bedtime story about staying cool in theme parks and listening to live, watch and attending live performances. And some thank yous at the end. So it's a structure show. I'm really glad you're here. Give it a few tries. See how it goes. But I'm so happy to help you and all my regular listeners. Uh, I'm so glad you're back. Uh, Welcome to Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And these sponsors are how we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, but Scoot's here, and, you know, you've heard these messages. I'm here to talk to you about, you know, what makes uh, things like Sleep With Me possible, stuff outside of the box, and that's our democracy, and represent us. And I don't know about you, but does it really feel like our leaders are responsive uh, to our needs uh, right now? Does it feel like things are running smoothly? Because if you don't feel like that, it's okay. Uh, You're not alone. You know, there's a lot of people having the same experience, uh, wondering, hey, is there something we can do? 
do to fix this? And here's the thing. There are things we can do right now to get things back on track. This podcast is part of the Pro-Democracy Podcast Coalition. It's a group of shows, hosts, and networks. We're banding together to try to make things better. And we're working with a grassroots and nonpartisan organization, Represent Us and You. So all you need to do is go to represent.us slash podcast and get more info on how you can get involved. Represent Us is the largest grassroots organization working city by city and state by state to pass laws that protect democracy and improve it. You know, we need a system that works for the American people, not just special interests. So go to represent.us slash podcast and join the movement today. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, sound for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. This is Sarah's Sleepy Supporter Zone. You probably heard about Sarah already. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah took the quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep. Got a Helix Midnight. And Sarah knows, like a lot of people uh, who have supported the sponsors over the years, let me know about it. Even people who take the free quiz uh, or so to sign up for a free trial, then they end up becoming a customer of the, one of those companies. It's powerful. That's what the Sleepy Supporter Zone all about and why I take the time to thank people like Sarah. I'd love to be thanking you, by the way, too, if you're hearing this, because our sponsors are direct response, meaning they base their support of the podcast, they say, like on how many people support them back. And in that way, most of the people who listen to Sleep and Me like listening to this ad-supported version of the show. They listen linearly. They wind down during the intro. They fall asleep at some point during the story. So many people benefit from that. It including a lot of people who just aren't in a position to support the show or the sponsors. And that's what the Sleepy Supporter Zone's all about. So thank you, Sarah, and thank you, everybody who's ever taken action to support the show. I don't know. It's just important to me uh, to be able to do this because this is just the way most people want to listen anyway. So thanks, Sarah, for for making that possible. If you want to be like Sarah, 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 uh, if you support a sponsor, you take a free trial, you take that quiz, make sure to let the sponsor know about it, let me know about it, and fill out the form at Sleep With Me podcast dot com slash sponsors so i can thank you like i just did sarah all right buddy the second part of the sleepy supporter zone is you getting the support you need right now if you need extra resources check out our show notes uh there's links to resources you could connect with right now including international resources so use those resources if you're in need please you're important to me and and i'm so glad to be able to help you uh, fall asleep and take your mind off stuff but there's other resources out there for you if you need them it's also about being a part of positive change, taking action, learning more, not just saying support Ukraine, not just saying stop at API hate, not just saying Black Lives Matter, but taking action, learning more. There's links where you can do that in the show notes. In the show, you know, I support a few different things. I realize there's a ton of different ways to support a ton of different stuff. I love hearing about the ways you're taking action to support stuff. But if you want to join us, we're supporting the Midnight Mission and people experiencing homelessness in Los Angeles. Uh, You could support that. We're supporting the Trevor Prize. Project and all of the affirming and saving work the Trevor Project does, and we're supporting the powerful work that Hand in Hand does. Uh, Hand in Hand believes that partnership is the only way forward. Together we live hand in hand. And you can check out that and you can learn more uh, in our show notes, any of those organizations. But you're also welcome to take your own action out there in the world and be a part of positive change. Uh, and that's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Sums. Sounds like an earful Wrote the theme song Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend Also edits episodes Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team Let us down They're on the website I am the mystery bar I do the lullabies, yeah I do commissions at Jonathan Man. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Biscuit, Lois, and a lap banana. Leah does the transcript.
Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget, if you want to get ad-free episodes for free, story-only episodes for free on Sleep With Me Plus, all you need to do is sign up for our referral program, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, R-E-F-E-R. Refer people to the free podcast using your link. You know, post stuff on social media, and you'll start earning rewards uh, a few months at a time. Uh, that's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. All right, what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it the bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether that's thoughts, like things on your mind or that you're thinking about, thoughts about the past, present, the future, feelings, anything coming up for you emotionally related to those thoughts or feelings that are just there. It could be physical sensations, changes in time, temperature, routine. You could be traveling, you could have guests coming, you could be have work a, a different shift than a lot of people, your work shift could have changed. Whatever it is, is that's keeping you awake, the only reason I go through that stuff is to let you know you're not alone. That's really the most important part about this show. And not everybody feels lonely in the deep, dark night. So, I mean, I also want to say, like, I don't know, validated doesn't feel like the right word, though. Like, I just want to talk about your importance and the importance of you getting the sleep you need and you deserve. But some sort of an acknowledgement, right, that we're here together. And whatever it is that's keeping you awake, I want to acknowledge that that's important and that I can probably relate to how it feels. I might not have been through the exact thing that's keeping you awake, but I may have been through something that feels similar. And even if I haven't, there's enough people listening that there's someone else listening right now, leaning in, who knows how it feels and who's been through something closely similar, and they feel for you. And that's an important thing to recognize and acknowledge. Even if most part of us would say, whoa, whoa, keep that over there. Or part of me like is still rolling its eyes at stuff like that, unfortunately. And all I can do is pat that part of me on the back and say, it'll be okay. I realize you're, uh, you know, it's not easy for you to accept that, uh, yeah, we know how it feels. And, and uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a bedtime where you could get some rest, the rest you need, so your life is more manageable. So you have a bedtime and a bedtime routine where you have something like a boyfriend or, or something. You say, well, at least this, you know, I got that sleep podcast to listen to. A friend in the deep, dark night. So, uh, yeah. Uh, because when you get the rest you need, your life is better. And that means the whole world is better. And that is the truth because everything, you know, you, you, you deserve that. And, 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 and you deserve that. You know what I mean? I'm stumbling over my words now because I'm feeling a little bit, whatever, of intimacy and, uh, it's, it's not easy to talk about this stuff. No, like, uh. And, and that's why I try to do it in a respectful way, but it's still important because you're important. So what I'll do here is I'll send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm using lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents. All to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff so you could drift off. And as I said earlier, the show is very different. And probably if you've been having trouble sleeping, you're probably skeptical or doubtful that the show would even work for you. Or you've gotten here and you're like, this doesn't meet my ex. This is very strange. It wasn't what I expected. Uh, And that's normal. For most people, that's their first experience of the show is uh, a dismay, I I think, is a way to generalize it. I don't know one's ever called it the spectrum of dismay, but uh, there's a lot of I've, 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 I've received emails of so many flavors of dismay, including this morning. Uh, the far side of the, the, uh, the far side of dismay might be nice, uh, just cause I like the far side, but yeah, this was coming from the, uh, the shadier side of dismay. Holy moly. But, but, but everybody experiences dismay when they get here. Not everybody, 
but a lot of people, the majority of people, because you the show's different. And you've been struggling to sleep and you're probably fed up a bit. So that's normal. Just give it a few tries and see how it goes. Now, if there's some reason, like the person that emailed me, that, they, they, that you uh, are 100% sure this podcast is not going to work for you, or that you just don't like me, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you has other sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff on there that you could check out. And, and so then maybe one of those shows, maybe one of the other sleep podcasts out there or some audio books or some noise, whatever it is, or a daytime, chill daytime podcast, maybe that could be what helps you get to sleep. So your sleep is still important to me. Because I know how it feels. Even when those people, uh, like, eat, yeah, even when you uh, have strong dismay, uh, it, like, uh, yeah. So um, what else? Show's very different. Takes some getting used to. One of the things that takes some getting used to is this is a podcast you don't really listen to. So a lot of people they say the show never starts until, like, 40 minutes into the show. And I say, okay, well, just give it a few tries. Like, see how it goes. Um, because this is a podcast you just barely listen to. It follows structure that I'll explain in a second, but it's meant to kind of ease you into bedtime, but that you're kind of just barely following along. Now, the intro's, believe it or not, the intro's a bit more, well, the story's still coherent too, but it's a loose coherence. So just get you kind of just listen um, like an out-of-focus picture or sand in your hands. You see, I can't really hold on to it. Uh, I don't know. You'll kind of see. And this is also a podcast that doesn't put you to sleep, believe it or not. Uh, I've been making the show over 10 years now. I don't know if there was any sleep podcast. I don't think there was when I first started. But, like, uh, even though this was, like, like kind of started this thing, it's not meant to put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company while you fall asleep, to take your mind off of stuff and be a distraction so you could fall asleep. And what does that mean? It means uh, that uh, I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar bestie, your neighbor, your boar burr, your boar bee, your boars, your boar bra. I'm here to be your friend and just kind of talk to you while you drift off. Or if you can't sleep, because the episodes are over an hour, because there's no pressure to fall asleep. I'm here to keep you company if you need it. I'm here to keep you company if you're awake or asleep because there's people who are listening who can't sleep or who need a break during the day. They're having a really tough day or maybe they just need to listen right now or they woke up. Whatever it is, I'm here for you to the very end, whether you're awake or asleep, so you don't have to fall asleep. That's why there's like 601 episodes ready to go and you can kind of, as you become a regular listener, kind of pick your favorites. So those are important things to point out. The other thing to point out is, uh, well, the show takes some getting used to, and I'll talk about the structure last. So I just, uh, you're hearing this episode like a while after I, I recorded it, but I just spent some time with family. And, you know, my younger nieces and nephews, like I, don't, I maybe only see them once or twice a year if I'm lucky. And as I said, I just got to spend some time with Anita, uh, Teddy, uh, Daniel, and Alex. And, uh, like, we were kind of talking. They call, they call me Uncle Baby, which is both, in, like, meant to be a little bit of, a, like, a non like, it's a bit of a joke, but it sounds cool, too. It's like Uncle Baby, to me, sounds cool. And I'm pretty good at playing it up. So then when they call me Uncle Baby, I act like Uncle Baby. And, but, it, but I only became Uncle Baby because I used to be that guy or the guy or, or that guy over there. And, uh, like, I was never, I never, like, had a, a t shirt like uh, your favorite uncle or whatever. It was like, hey, like, is that guy coming with us? Or you want to sit next to, uh, sit next to that guy? Yeah, okay, I could sit next to that guy. He's kind of silly. And then just like the podcast, and that's what people, some people say that boring guy is their partners or people in their life, or, or I don't think I've ever become uncle baby to anybody listening, but I could, it's uncle baby's more of a daytime, uh, you know, it's more of a, a like a non-sleep time nickname. Cause I mean, there's like the real world uncle baby that just tries to make kids laugh, uh, by my over the top behavior 
or my natural behavior. Then there's a there's a Uncle Baby, the imaginary Uncle Baby. That's like in a, like a, like there's a jet like a you know acoustic bass playing, and I'm walking down the street and people you know doing some point you know hey hey Uncle Baby's in town. That's right. That's right. Uncle Baby is here. Like uh, as, so. I mean, that's just, but no one knows about that Uncle Baby's life. It's like my own fan fiction. Um, so, like, it took my, just like to take some time for a lot of people to get used to the podcast, that's a natural process for everything, right? I don't just become your boyfriend. I have to kind of slowly go through the trust building process or by boring you and going off topic and just barely engage. You say, not quite boring me. You're just not. And I say, yeah, I've done, you know, I do it during the day too. I went from being that guy to Uncle Baby. So that's the Uncle Baby Genesis story. I promised, um, what else? Oh, structure the show. The show is designed in a very specific way. And that's just because, uh, like based on feedback over the past 10 years of what works best and, but you can't adjust the show. So I kind of tell you, the show starts off with a greeting Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Then I kind of go on a tangent. But that's, again, the that guy product. You say, okay, I could check that podcast out, maybe. Like, I don't know. I don't want to, like, to, I'm, I'm not totally a fan of it yet, but I'll keep listening. Then there's support. So paying for the podcast is optional. For people that want an ad-free version, they sign up for Sleep With Me Plus or the referral program. But for most people, the sponsor support works great for them. And so then there's an intro after the support and the intro is, uh, it's separate from the support and it, it started, I don't know, like the intro is about 15 to 20 minutes long. And the intro is where I explain what the podcast is ineffectively, like I did tonight, but you get a general idea of what the show is going to be like for regular listeners. It follows a similar structure, but it's different every time. So you have something new to look forward to. Whatever keeps you awake, it can't quite adjust because it doesn't know what's coming. Didn't know I'd be talking about Uncle Baby. And for some of you, I mean, for regular listeners, they, they'd they say that's probably the nick. I mean, I would have never guessed your nickname was Uncle Baby, but it makes perfect sense. So, so they're kind of barely giggling. Um, but so um, what was the point? Oh, so the intro, though, you say, well, why would a podcast have like a 15 to 20 minute intro? Shouldn't it just be the, and I say, well, the intro serves another purpose, which is to ease you into bedtime. The intro is not really here to put you to sleep. It does put a small percentage of people asleep. There's a small percentage of people that skip the intro. There's people who, um, like, uh, just like listen to the in- intro intros or people that just listen to story only versions of the show. But for most people, the intro is the wind down. So it's not really here to put you to sleep. You could be in bed getting comfortable or you could be getting ready for bed or winding down. And that's just what works for me and the majority of people is having a bedtime routine to ease you into bedtime, to have some transition. And so that's what the intro is there for. Then there's support. Then it'll be our bedtime story. Then it'll be my neighbor, Ray, talking about staying cool and seeing performances at theme parks. And uh, then there's thank yous at the end of the show. So that's a structural show. That's why I make the show. And I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're a regular listener, welcome back, or you're new, I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for coming by. It really work. I work hard. So do a bunch of other people because we yearn and we strive. We really want to help you fall asleep. So thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive, where customers who save by switching their home and car save nearly $800 on average. Quote at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $793 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2021 and May 2022. Potential savings will vary. All right, but this is Scoots. I'm just uh, setting up my neighbor, Ray, Ray Perkins, who's going to come on and talk about uh, a renaissance fair we went to this summer. 
And I wanted to give a shout out to Alan, who Ray and I got to meet at the... Oh, no, Ray wasn't with me, actually. But I got to meet Alan, a listener from Sleep With Me who recognized me. And I want to thank Alan for saying hi and kind of dedicate this episode to Alan. Because it's very rare, one, that I meet any listeners from Sleep With Me in person. But to meet someone at a place where I'm doing research for the show. And I had... um. Uh, just like, uh, it was so, so wild because I had just gotten, um, like there was like this Renaissance fair has really bounced back. So there was long lines for a lot of stuff and we were there for a while. Uh, we we're really doing the Renaissance fair up. So we needed some coffee. So we'd gotten cappuccino. Maybe they had not coffee and I had gone to get them. And that's when I ran into Alan and, and a couple of people Alan was with. And, and, and it was like, uh, Alan said, are, are, wait a second, are you the guy that makes, are you Scooter? And I was like, holy cow. And I, so I had three hot coffees in my hands. So I couldn't like, uh, it was kind of like, uh, it was just so cool. And so we took some pictures together and, uh, I don't know. It was awesome. So I really appreciate it. And, and uh, knowing that Alan listens to the show and, uh, lives in the area where I grew up in generally, I don't know, small world. Uh, so it's cool. So thank you, Alan, for saying hi. And without further ado, here's my neighbor, Ray Perkins. Hello, 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 everybody. This is your neighbor, Ray, Scooter's neighbor, Ray, but you're in your heart, I'm your neighbor too. And, uh, yeah, so this, this is your neighbor, Ray. Scooter, we didn't do a father figure day, so will, you think this will be the father figure? Scooter's shrug, shrugging his ears at me, shrugging his ears, shrugging his ears at me. So I'm just in case you knew, welcome to sleep with me. I'm Scooter's neighbor Ray. Some people say, uh, Sco Scooter, uh, how does uh, how does uh, who's Ray? Uh, sounds a bit. I I know. I mean, I know I sound a bit like Scooter because I've learned from him how to do a sleep podcast. And I used to call him the pod boy uh, because uh, that's what he is. He's my little pod boy, though I haven't called him in a while. My pod boy's all grown up. I would like to pinch his cheeks. Uh, but I'm Scooter's neighbor uh, twice, not removed, but uh, I moved twice moved. I, I, his Sco I met Scooter years ago before the podcast even, though he wasn't very, like, uh, even during the podcast, he didn't really... Uh, he doesn't have a lot to say to people, though he's he's working on that. Um, so we'll have to see. Like, uh, um, like uh, he's he's really trying to grow up. Uh, but uh, what, what? But so I ran into him when I was in neighbor. I'm very outgoing, and I said, you know, I always like to say, you know, just do your best. Uh, I'd like to know you though. But Scooter was, uh, you know, you could listen to other episodes. I want to get into this run. And, and hello to Alan. I did not get to meet Alan because Scooter had gone off to get us all coffees. We were there with uh, Scooter's, one of Scooter's brothers. And uh, Scooter's like, well, she's not a little one anymore. Once upon a time, she was the little one. We refer to her as his, his daughter as the little one. But, uh, n n you know, no longer. But what an experience we had at this Renaissance Festival in Sterling, New York. I have the uh, bro. What is this? This is not the brochure, but uh, this is the, uh, I don't know, the pan this has the schedule on here, the map, everything, everything we need. And you can find out more at sterlingfestival.com where excitement reigns. And this was uh, this year. Or the year last year, because I'm, it's almost the end of the year. We it was July first through August thirteenth. I don't know when we went. It was in August, I think, or the end of July. Oh, it says price fifty cents though. We we got these for free when we paid. And there's a one hundred eight and eight hundred number. That's rare, an eight hundred number. So I guess I'll talk about it a little bit because this was um. Let's see, how do I talk about it without a uh, Okay, so this was one of the, like, uh, our best Renaissance Fair experience. And I don't want to point any fingers, but, but at, or, and especially at, or not at Mother Nature. But Mother Nature, in this case, did play a factor. Because Mother Nature, the weather was warm, but not too hot. It was uh, partly, partly sunny, so it wasn't too sunny. 
So that was part one. Mother Nature, it didn't rain and it hadn't rained the night before because the Renaissance Fair can get muddy, you know. Uh, so that was one part. The other part was we had a small party. It was just the four of us. And that makes, and, and uh, you know, we were all pretty flexible. Uh, but we decided we would intentionally go to shows on time and try to pick shows ahead of time and sit through the show to experience some shows fully. Because what happens is, it, or what we found is that if you're in a group of people, um, you know, everybody not only has their different expectations, but the different ability, like uh, where they want to go. And, you know, timing show, like this was a nice group and we had set the intention, hey, let's go to some shows for the whole time. Let's pick them while we're sitting. We'll get to the show. We'll try to get to the shows early and we'll see if we could go to quite a few shows. Otherwise, you kind of just eat and walk around and and you maybe see a couple shows or you separate. um, and, and again, this was also like we talk about with the Six Flags or the Dickens Fair. You're not going to be able to do every, well, this is a This is a benefit. This is, what do they call it, a feature, not a flaw. But you're not going to be able to do everything. And I mean, I guess at this price, I don't know how much it costs. I don't see a price on here. Not inexpensive, but not, you know, costing as much as these theme parks. Uh understandably, but actually with the val, when you think about it, let's just say, let's just say for, for saying sake that it was $50, maybe we'll look it up, but, um, pretty easy to get $50 of, uh, value out of this, I would say. And now, again, not everybody's in a position to do that. I understand that. Uh, now a couple other things about this specific Renaissance fair. Well, one, when Scooter was just a lad, he fell in love with, uh, one of the performers at a distance at the Renaissance Fair when he was just a high school lad, I believe. And she was performing in one of the, uh, like they used to close it out, close out the night with a full, like a shorter version of a Shakespearean play. So that was one thing. And that was only when Scooter, that was the only time Scooter went, uh, I think in his whole life, uh, it, cause it's just not the kind of thing with Scooter's family, not eight people. That's pretty expensive in all the age ranges, but this was a highly promoted thing in both Syracuse and Rochester, I believe, because it's kind of placed perfectly in between those two uh, metro areas and then all the surrounding areas. So that was one thing. The other thing is that this one is, it's, uh, it's built on its own grounds. So it has permanent structures. It is built into a hill and they've added new structures, and actually they even had a new structure this year that we didn't get to, we, well, we, we walked over to it, but we didn't um, get to see a performance, like a new stage. And uh, so that is another nice feature. The, very much like the Dickens Fair, you do not want, and I think it'll probably be different next year, but you really want to time your eating or bring food because the lines for food can be very long, especially nowadays in this world, like a Renaissance fair. Particularly, this location was remote, so I don't think they had, you could, you know, your phone didn't always have service. And not all the vendors had internet service. So it was like some, some were cash only and some were cash lists. And, you know, like, uh, no offense, you know, Ray, you know, I'm older than Scooter, but I would prefer, I'm just, I, I prefer a cashless uh, transactions, much easier for everybody in line and for the people working. But you got to do what you got to do. So you will have to wait in, in very long lines if you're eating, though that hasn't always been the case. And so, like, pre-2020, there were times the lines were long. And there were times that they, they were sparse because Scooter remembers eating hot dogs and not waiting in line, he said. But I think this was the first year. So we've been going pretty regularly, not every year, but anytime Scooter can convince people to go, he goes. But, you know, that doesn't always translate into uh, it kind of depends on the group of people you're bringing. And I think what we saw with this one is go in with your, like your smallest group possible, but we'll see next year if we go or not. Um, 
Oh, this is in New York State, by the way, where, where Scooter and I was n- not far from where Scooter grew up, but also in the middle. Like, takes took us about an hour, forty five minutes to an hour to get there. You think Scooter? Scooter thinks so. So it's uh, it's very large. It does involve a lot of walking. It's a lot of uneven paths. So like. Uh, like it, the last time Scooter went with his father and his mother, you know, it's not easy for his mother to navigate all these paths. Plus, it had been raining, so then it was even slippier. So you do have to take that into account, uh, like, when, when you're planning ahead of time and you're planning your group. Also, there's a lot of all-ages shows, but, you know, that, like, uh, that appeal to, a, like, a certain age range of kids, but a smaller age of kids is going to be tough for them to sit down through shows, I think. So, okay, so let's see. Like, uh, now, one of the things, this is on the back of the um, brochure, like, whatever the, I don't know what to call this thing, it, the uh, thing, the pl- like a playbill, I guess. So one of the things that distinguishes the Sterling Renaissance Fair from other Renaissance festivals, a Renaissance festival, is it has a full-time professional core of actors and performers from across the country. And weeks of rehearsal uh, and training go into the varied and colorful citizens of Warwick uh, you see all around you. And they're called the Wildwood Players, uh, W-Y- L D E W O O D players. And they're the citizens of Warwick. And so they had, uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth's court. Uh, they had the queen Cardinal, Sir Walter Raleigh, Sir Francis Drake, uh, Lady Dorothy Edmonds and Lady Margaret Radcliffe. And Scooter saw a show with them. That was quite good. Then you have the villages of Warwick, uh, Lord Mayor, Lady Mayor, Mayor's daughter, Mayor's nurse, the sheriff of Warwick, the constable, the watchman, the innkeeper, and the scullery. Scooter, do you know if you saw? Uh, Scooter doesn't think he saw. It. In the past, we've gone to the dunking show. Oh, then there's another scullery, a uh, brigand. Enoch, the alchemist, and the alchemist's assistant. We saw that show. Uh, Gossamer Tangle Swirl. And then the Washers. We saw the Washer show. Then there's Rogues and Vagabonds. Uh, was it, Scooter, was that Travelers and Thieves to Rogues and Vagabonds, the Blues Travel album? I got a laugh out of him with that. That's a deep cut joke for all of you. Rogues and Vagabonds or Travelers and Thieves? Uh, Okay, there's the uptightman, the cut purse, the uh, the person who uh, takes uh, things, uh, the catching things, uh, someone who's gallant, uh, someone who's... So there's different people that are rogues and vagabonds. Okay, we didn't read this part, or at least I didn't know. Rosettes, if you look closely, you'll notice all the vil- villages of Warwick wear unique rosettes in honor the queen. Actually, with so many visitors arriving dressed in the garb of the day, we thought you might like a way to tell the villages from the visitors. So that is uh, helpful. Then there's entertainment staff. They have an artistic director, assistant artistic director, production stage manager, technical director, historian, uh, music director, uh, action director, costume designer, wardrobe manager, assistant wardrobe, wardrobe intern. And then we have scenario directors and then workshop instructors, inter- interactive theater technique, uh, uh, director of improvisation, creative development, styles director, and styles instructors. Okay, so now we're going to go through... Um, Let's see. We'll go to the shows last because we have plenty of time here to work our way through. Next up is a Wildwood play. As you stroll through the beautiful Warwick uh, and you'll find yourself greeted by the town citizens who warmly welcome you. This is the oldest full-time professional acting troupe of any Renaissance festival and the inspiration behind many interactive entertainment groups and theme parks across the country. In addition to many lane encounters you'll experience, I guess that's like a theater of the atmosphere, whatever. The Wildwood Players present stage performances throughout the day. 
Some of the scheduled uh, shows are listed. Some are unannounced events that happen throughout the day, so keep your eye out. Okay, so we'll come back to it. Then it has lists of games and rides. Uh, so there's rides, toma- tomatoes. Uh, uh, there's a slide. We did go down the slide. I think that's been closed. But so, so when Scooter asked if it had been closed for the past few years, the person said it hadn't. But we did go down the slide. I don't know if it's designed so much for adults. Uh, there's also, you can be show how strong you are. You can throw things. There's a, a pirate ship and um, a sea friend. You can go, these are wooden human powered attractions. There's a maze. When we had, when we went with the little kids, we went, we would go in the maze uh, and you will get out of this maze. Unlike the fish song. Don't worry, you'll find your way out of the maze. Uh, though you probably don't want to do it very, like you will probably want to do it every three or four years. Uh, let's see, there's camels you could say hi to. There's a barrel you could go in a ride in, which Scooter and uh, Scooter's daughter did once, I think. You could go for a horse ride on the roundabout. There's a hamster wheel where you get your own, where you grind your own snow cone. We watched that one. There's tossing of dots. Uh, oh, the crow's nest is the one Scooter had gone in. Um, then there's, uh, you could throw a cannonball. Uh, you can, th- there's different other things, archery, ball tossing, uh, carousello. Do you remember? I don't know if we saw the carousel. Um, and there's even a museum. And then there's a remembrance shop. Uh, okay, then there's a lot of artisans, uh, fine artisan craft folk from the far corners of the realm. And uh, let's see, this. Uh, let's see, there's a gift shop. That's a remembrance shop. There's people that sell uh, bags, uh, wings uh, on glass, wings, uh, stained glass, uh, heart hat shop. Uh, Wooden uh, defensive items from uh, from the Black Swan, soap and body products from the Handmaid's Garden, high point crafts, brooms, fans, and walking sticks, uh, Fay fancies and elfin essentials. That's from Dusty Wire Fairy Creations. Horn vessels. Oh, Valhalla for horns. Uh, that's a like a, a horn you drink out of. But so this is, I guess, a tangent. We 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 ran. There was a gentleman who bought a horn that you blow, and he had overindulged, uh, and uh, he um, was just parading through it, blowing the horn. But it was so irritating that even the group he was with, they were walking like fifteen feet in front of them, and he blew it. Every time he blew it, he was full of joy. And but no one else was, uh, but he was oblivious to that fact because uh, he thought each time he blew it that it was very unique. And Scooter was not annoyed because he said, "I was I've been that guy before." Like Scooter said, I mean he couldn't judge, but he said I would have been out of my loop. Uh, and I I don't know if the general you know you could walk, Renaissance fair. I think you have to have a shirt, but maybe you don't. Or maybe you just had some sort of shirt like low coverage shirt on you know, with braces and those kind of things. But Scooter said, you know, I would have been the guy walking around blowing the horn and, you know, being left behind. But it was just funny in a sense because he just kept blowing it. Uh, like he would walk 10 feet and then he'd blow it again. And he would look around like he was waiting for applause. And I think in his head he was hearing some encouragement, but I don't think anyone was encouraging him. Like maybe he, the first two times he blew it after he bought it, uh, he got encouraged, but we, you know, we, we don't like, uh, like Scooter said, that was Scooter. Okay. Then we have fairy wings and unicorn horns, uh, from fairy Haven children's clothing from Bella's baubles and babes, uh, in the woods, uh, uh, sculptures, uh, by Jason, another sculpture by Bob, uh, Rainbow Weaving by Stacy Art Glass, uh, Silver Mail. So, silver Mail makes me want to sing. Silver Mail, Silver Mail. It might be under your armor, going jingling. 
uh, Starfire, uh, New World Mugs and Wood, Flutes uh, from Wild Rose Creations, Pottery by Jason, uh, Henna Body Art uh, by Maha, uh, Fiber Weaving Inch by Inch, Pottery Middle Earthen Wares, Fairy Doors by Blue Toucan Fairy Doors. Book binding by Greenleaf Books with an E. Uh, wings at the Hatchery. Bah, oh, uh, threads of Time Clothing. Catskill Mountain Shoes. Mad- Madrigan's Mail. That's another one for chain mail. Uh, hair Sticks at KJ Craftworks. Uh, handcrafted Things at Scapa. Moon Phase Pendants by Moonchild Designs. I think that's the one where they stamp the things. They do that at the Dickens Fair. Uh, you got uh, Tarot Tea Leaf Readings, Palmistry, and Mediums uh, by appointment. Pewter Smithing by Belena Bay Pewter. Uh, Hollow Earth uh, Stuff to Practice with. Herbs Olfactory Lavender Farm. Little Wing Studios, Jewelry, Crystal Visions, Lampwork Glass, Linda's Heirlooms, Garlands and Flowers. Oh boy, do those, are those nice. Uh, Royal Rags by Laura, Clothing by Morseca, The Coin Mint, uh, The Coin Mint. Oh, maybe that's the one where they mint coins. Uh, uh, more uh, Maha's uh, Henna, Hair Braiding. Games and Novelties at the Realm, Flowers by Jennifer, uh, Woodworking and Candles, Elder Earth, uh, Beeswax Candles, Honey Tincture tincture and Salves by the Pixie Traveling Medicine Show, Beekeepers, uh, they do alchemy and beekeeping talks, uh, uh, Shoulder Puppets by Imaginarium Galleries, uh, Face painting by Face and Body Art by Liza. Flute and Songbooks uh, by Ocarinas. Oh, Drinking Horns, Wassail Horns, uh, Metal Sculpture, Castile Galleries. Painted Ladies Face Painting, Woven Hammocks by Chrysalis Hammocks. Wood Carving at the Wooden Unicorn, Walking Sticks at Renaissance Hiking Sticks. Hidden Watches, Clip Clocks, uh, uh, Dacian Fox, uh, Hot's Delight Clothing, and Shepherd's Moon Jewelry. All right, so that's like covers the Audisons. Now let's get to the shows, all right? Okay, this one we failed to go to. We tried to go... Um, to the antics of the wild, this is all the stage an- antics of the wildwood plays. Uh, maybe I'll just huh, some of these I'm gonna have to skip because uh, I don't know. Um, let's see here. Well, we'll have to. Well, we we could recap sometimes, but I don't want to go through the shows we went to. But we did try to go to this Warwick Inn show. It was supposed to be eleven fifteen, one thirty, and five. Uh, a faulty tower style show of fun. Inside the inn is an intimate pub with an interior balcony. Oh, well, unscheduled antics take place. Uh, on the outside, you'll find these hysterical adventures. But we tried to see that we were unsuccessful, so I don't know. We sat down, I think, at 11.15. Maybe not. I don't know. Then they said no, uh... Or one thirty or five. That's what scheduled antics are. Well, maybe twelve forty-five because there's Braggart's Row, which was uh, next door to the War- Warwick Inn. Oh no, we looked at this. This was one of the ones they have a feast and a meeting there. I know where this is. We didn't go there, but we, like because there was another show. Three thirty, twelve forty-five. I don't know. It was competing with another show we were watching. Probably. I don't know. Then the laundry layer, which used to be lower, but this got moved up top. Uh, and we saw the show, so we'll talk about it later. The House of Psychic. Uh, I think we saw this one with Enoch the Alchemist. Uh, oh, yeah. So we saw this one. This was the first show we saw. So we saw 
that show. Then the fairy ring, nestled in the haunt of the fair, is a stone place you could easily walk by. We miss this one. Beneath the, beneath the stair is the and winding ramp lies of Warwick's own fairy ring. Tiny and unseen, they've been there all along. But this time you could go meet Gossamer Tangle Squirrel. Tangle Squirrel. Tangle Swirl. Uh, you could see it throughout the day, but especially at 11, 15, 1 30, 2 45. And so we saw two of those shows. Okay, now there's more en- entertainers of the realm. The dunk stage. We we did not do this this year because we had, uh, um, we just didn't make it there. But, uh, we, we like because uh, we'd seen it a couple of years in a row. It's a funny, funny show. Uh, the constabulary t- t- teaches justice in the depths of the frog pond twice daily. High comedy show. That's at twelve forty-five and three thirty. Then the royal festival stage. There's Her Majesty's court uh, scheduled antics at twelve forty-five, and then a courtly duel. This was another very good show. We saw this. It was at 4.15. And I don't know if that was the last show we saw, but it was excellent. Uh, okay, then stage acts. Is there any times for the... Oh, they'll be later in the show. Um, when we Okay, so these are the stage acts. Uh, so this will help us figure out. Uh, so the joust, uh, that's a full joust. I think they do that twice a day. That's by Ho- W Horse Productions. Judas and Magnolia. This was new. They were a team of award-winning artists. Uh, we wanted to see this one. I don't think we got to see that one. Uh, Cirque Brava. We, we've seen this. We saw this one, um, and we really like this one. We've seen this two years in a row. As C-I-R-Q-A Brava. Or maybe we missed it one year and we saw it, up. but it's uh, high flying acrobats, mesmerizing delight, uh, and it has comedy too. Uh, then the El Zappos is Zany Magic Circus. We didn't see this one either, I don't think. Uh, balancing stunts, uh, audience volunteers, uh, birds in the sky. Uh, we didn't see that one, but we saw the birds, owl, vulture, falcon, hawk. We saw that one. This one we saw last year, another really high quality show, Theater of Fools, Wacky Chicken Show. It's inspired by, uh, Shakespeare's, uh, Theater of Fools. Uh, it's hysterical. It was a, um, yeah, that was a great show too. We saw that two years ago. Then we definitely saw this one this year. So we already have four shows. Uh, this was the, uh, I don't know, five shows? One, two. Oh, no. One, two, three, four, five. So we saw over five shows. This is the Homeless Juggling Show. And that was madcap comedy. And some of the best juggling I've ever seen. Clan Tinker Circus. We saw this one or two years ago. Uh, traveling performers who take you by the hand, leading you into the world of wonder. So that's a good show. We didn't see it last year, though. Daniel the Duke, a uh, uh, series of poor decisions. and co- We've seen him before. He's also very good. Uh, Nature of Mercy, energetic uh, a comedy show that teaches children uh, the power of honor and compassion. I haven't seen that one. Emery's Fleet, uh, this show we saw, it's about uh, this guy's pet collection. It's more puppets. Uh, this was uh, features Wilbur, the dancing puppet pet. You'll feel like you've had a nap. Uh, this was It's just a comedy show. Very well done, though. And then um, Emery walks around a lot, too. So a good walking around ca- character. Falconry. This is just the display of the show for later, I think. Uh, Giacomo, the jester, magic rope, rope walking, and obnoxious behavior. And then Lucy, like Venus with alms. Uh, that's all it says about that show. Gab's the fool. 
uh, Gab's uh, on a journey of wonder, a quiet wonder, performing in the lanes all season and four shows daily on July 8th and 9th. Oh, so some of these are limited performances. That's why, like El Zappo, Judas and Magnolia, though that was playing when we were there, it looks like. And then uh, Irregulars, Highland Bagpipes and Drums. Uh, oh, they do have themed weekends, that's why. Then Musical Groups and Minstrels, Cantiga, they played... Uh, so, Scoot, I think we're missing... Oh, no, okay. So, on in the stage acts, we saw Cirque Brava. We'll talk about it, because we'll try to recap our day. The Juggling and Emery's Fleet, right? Is, is that all the ones we saw? You think so? And we tried to go see a couple other ones. We didn't make it, huh? Okay, Empty Hats. That's Celtic music, unplugged but wired. Uh, Jim Hancock and Friends. That's in a pub sing. Cranog, uh, Celtic songs, uh, ballads, and more. Lord Cayley and Carmichael, Scottish emissary to the Queen. Mary Mischief, uh, toe-tapping ballads, ditties, uh, and more. And Walmut, uh, bagpipes and drums. And then there's ones that are not for children. There's two shows. Scooter's dad loved the one, Arthur Greenleaf Holmes, uh, and then there's another one. Uh, so those ones, are they say not for children. Okay, so let's look at the schedule here. Though I don't have my glasses. Uh, so the show started at 10.05. There was the opening ceremony. We weren't there for that. We definitely weren't there at 10.30. Though I think Scooter wanted to be there at 10.30. 11.15. Okay, 10.30 was this town revels uh, and the uh, pet show and dance. Uh, so nothing super going on in Cantiga. Okay, eleven fifteen is a juggling show, but we don't we don't think we saw that one because Scooter thinks the first show we saw was at eleven fifteen. There it is. Okay, so the other shows at eleven fifteen that we didn't see were the juggling show, which is strange because I thought that was the second thing we saw. Scooter sh shrugging his head. Uh, well, let's look at the um. Applewood stage. Yeah, no, that's where that juggling show was, Scooter. Okay, well, anyway, Merry Mischief, uh, Empty Hats, Celtic Music, Daniel the Duke, uh, Comic Equilibrium, House of the Flagon, uh, the, the Book of uh, Alchemy. That's the one we saw. I'm, sure, I'm almost positive that was the first show we saw at 11.15. Though it is possible we saw it at 12.45, but I don't think so. So, okay, so probably the first show we saw. You could also saw the Theater of Fools, uh, the Wacky Chicken Show, um, Wool Much or whatever, Gossamer Tangle Swirl, Circa Brava, Shakespeare for Not for Children, or Falconry. Okay, but let's pretend we saw, let's just say, but how do we see the... The strange thing is, uh, I don't know, Scooter, I think we probably saw the Book of Doom, uh, the, the Book of Alchemy at 1245, because then, do you think we got there that late? I mean, maybe we did. Okay, so let's pretend we got there. Maybe we got there later than we thought. So, I guess it would make sense since we were there so late. Okay, so let's pretend we missed that round, 1115. Maybe we got there around 12-something. So Cantiga, Giancomo, Crenag, Irish Music, Wishing Well Show, some sort of public uh, trouble show, Nature of Mercy, Family Show, Clan Tinka Circus. Okay, Circus Brava. Okay, so this helps. Um, it doesn't help us work backwards. Okay, maybe we saw Cirque Brava at 3 then. Yeah, we're working backwards now. Okay, so you could have saw, um, where were we? Kalantinka or the Joust. That's when the Joust is going on. Uh, Arthur Greenleaf Holmes or the, either the Zany Magic Circus or the Escape Family. Okay, so we, I, now I'm thinking we got there at, tw so we got there around 12.15, between 12.15 and 12.30, we'll say. 
And then we, because, okay, so this makes a little bit more sense. This is what Ray loves. We'll put, we'll put, put piece in it together, piece by piece. Okay, so twelve forty-five. Uh, you could we could have gone to empty hats, Mary mischief, Daniel the Duke, uh, the feast, the book of alchemy, which we did. Okay, this is making more sense. Um, no, not quite making sense yet, Scooter. But um, I think you're right because uh, we could have gone to the puppet pet show, Her Majesty's court. Uh, uh, the Dunk Show, Wolgut, uh, Theater Fools, Shakespeare, or Falconry. So we went to the Book of Alchemy. Now, that was a fun show. It was a slow-building comedy show uh, with two people working together and had in a audience interaction with singing. So then it became kind of a comedy music show with a little bit of magic in there. And a decent amount of kids participating and adult everybody singing along. So we recommend that show. That was at 1245. And also we ate our lunch while waiting for that show to start. So maybe we tried to go to something else and then we went over there. But I remember we sat there before the show started. So it makes sense. We got to 1230. Okay, then we went to the juggling after. So that makes sense because the juggling's pretty close and that's at was at one thirty. And yeah, when we ate our lunch, had but like it took almost a, like a large portion of the of the show to get our lunch. We took turns waiting in line. Okay, so then the, we saw the juggling show. Now the juggling show is excellent, but I gotta say something. So the poor juggler uh, it was perfect. It was in a very shady spot. The juggling was great. But at one point, the juggler is like, have you, have you ever seen anybody, well, I don't know, juggle three balls with one hand or something? And someone raises the hand. Now, don't ever do this. I understand the temptation. But someone in the audience raises the hand and say, and they start juggling with three balls in one hand or something. And they're like, oh, yeah, I could do that. Uh, and then they tried to do it again, like upstage the performer. I, I mean, they were younger. They were not a child. They were probably like late high school to somewhere between 17. And they were a male between 17 and 27, I would say. Don't do it. Hello. Like the juggle is juggling. You're not there to juggle in the audience unless you're an invited thing. It was just so funny. I'm not doing it justice because it was like a comedy sequence. They said, uh, "Have you?" And someone said, "Yeah, no, I can do it right now." And they started doing it. And the, even the performer was like, "Huh?" And I think they had something somewhat kind but deflecting to say. But it was like, "Hello, put your juggling balls away. You're at you're you're a guest of a juggling show." I don't know. I, I'd have to t check with Scooter and his brother and stuff. But but it was just like, uh, did this just happen? Did an audience member just troll a juggler by like kind of up, trying to upstage them? I could juggle four balls with my hand, one hand. So, because they were like, have you ever, I mean, like it was something, I think it was like three balls with one hand is pretty hard or two balls even. And uh, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't so like, and they were there with a date they were trying to impress clearly. So that was another part of it. It didn't go as poorly as it sounds either. Everybody just moved on except for Scooter because Scooter's still like, you believe that guy? Hello, he's trying to juggle. We don't need you juggling out there. But if you're a comedian, I guess you say, well, that, like, uh, what do they call it when the audience members have something to say because they think they're funny? I mean, this person was doing the same thing, but they... Uh, um. That happened to Scooter, actually. Like, he did, he doesn't, he, like, did a live show where it was open admission, and it was at a conference, and there was people, and it was after a cocktail hour, and so people came in, and they tried to, like, whatever, do it, and then people were like, be quiet, it's a sleep podcast, you, 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 you. why don't you go interrupt a juggler? So anyway, that was one of the funniest things we saw from the audience, so that was at one thirty. Okay, then we went to the Queen's Parade. So this is making sense. Queen's Parade was at 2.15. 
Other shows were uh, The Nature of Mercy, themed weekend costume contests, Rogue's Revels, Gossamer Tangle Squirrel, Clan Tinker Circus, Falconry, Circa Brava, Author, and yeah, then this Queen's Parade. Everybody's in that Queen's Parade. Okay, now it's going to get confusing because uh, what did we see next? We got a, we how, so we saw maybe I could work backwards. Uh, okay, this is interesting here. Okay, so I know how many. So we've seen two shows. I forgot how many we saw total. Cirque Bravo. We still have the puppet uh, puppet show. The stage show with the professional performers. Not that anybody else is not in the um, Cirque Brava. Huh. Okay, we'll figure it out. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this makes sense. So, so we'll figure it out in here. Okay, so 245. Uh, it's uh, Contiga, Walmut, Cronag, Daniel, the Duke. Uh, so we didn't see any of those shows. The Wishing Well show. With laundry, we did see that show, so we either saw it at two forty-five or four fifteen. So we're close here. Um, Giacomo, Gossamer Tangle Squirrel, Theater Fools, Shakespeare. Okay, so we probably saw the Wishing Well show at two forty-five, and then Scooter's brother was a part of the show, and the show is very bawdy, but uh, goes over most of the kids' head, but they like are looking for the most muscular men that are tall and very muscular. And they picked a Scooter's brother, who's a tall, muscular man, and then a man who is even more muscular and, and the same tallness. And I think they had him do different, I don't know, it was part of a play, very high comedy, very well-trained performers. Again, these are the um, paid performers. And uh, really well done. And, I mean, a huge crowd. This was show we got to right when it started, so we couldn't even sit down. And I'm, I, that must be the time we saw that show because there's no overlap. Uh, okay, so then the next show would have been, yeah, 3.30. Okay, so then the next show, Harmless Juggling. We didn't see We see, We already had seen that. Empty Hats, Celtic Music, Merry Mischief, uh, Swindles. Uh, Book of Alchemy, the puppet, pet, pet puppet show. So that's what we saw. We went from the wishing well to the pet puppet show. We got there early. We got seats. And that's when Scooter left to go get coffees. And that's when he met our friend Alan, which was cool. So around uh, 3, uh, 320 is when he met Alan. Uh, and then Nature of Mercy. Uh, try the dunking show, Clan Tinker, Cirque Brava, Arthur Holmes, and then the Zany Circus show. Okay, so four fifteen. Yeah, this is it. This is we're, we're on target now. We figured out our schedule. It was four fifteen. We could have seen Cantiga, Cronog, Jim Hancock, uh, Daniel the Duke, Wishing Well, we, which we already saw, Town Auction. A courtly duel. But this was more like a, an importance of being titled. It was more like a send-up royalty. The queen's in the show, and everybody's trying to write this, like one of the main characters trying to write a play, and everybody's getting in the way of the play. Like, it's just a very funny show. Uh, and then uh, music, gossamer, tangle squirrel, tangle squirrel. Theater of Fools, again, the Theater of Fools show uh, is like uh, Shakespeare Falconry. And then at 5 o'clock we saw Cirque Brava. I think we tried to go see the Escape show or the Zany, Zany Circus, oh, but that wasn't that weekend. So we definitely, okay, that makes sense then. So at 5 o'clock you could have seen Cantiga, Juggling, Empty Hats, Mischief, Judah and Magnolia, I think, oh no, that's a different stage. Uh, the in-between town meeting, uh, the, the, the puppet show, Clan Tinker Circus, Cirque Brava, that's what we saw, Arthur Holmes, Zany Magic, or Zappos, and the Cirque Brava show is re really well done. It has some comedy, audience, uh, one person who's quiet, one person who talks. 
and a lot of like aerial, uh, aerial performing uh, is really well done. Then uh, closing it out was the joust and then two different music shows and then a final pub sing. And they also have uh, themed weekends, family appreciation weekend, romance weekend, ale fest weekend, pirate weekend. That may have been the weekend we went because Alan was dressed as a pirate. Uh, and then uh, Highland weekend, ferry. Oh, no, maybe we were at the f- f- August 5th through the 6th, I think. That's when we were there, Scooter. Maybe uh, fantasy fairies in the future. That's probably when we were there. And then the grand finale weekend. And yeah, there's a map of the thing. It's pretty wide. You know, you go in, you could go, if you go, usually we'll go in the main gate and then we'll go straight to the privies. And then you walk around uh, Braggart's Row. That's where a few stages are. There's usually music playing. The Warwick Inn is there. And what we did was that's when we ended up at the uh, House of the Psychic. Uh, and then we kind of got food, waited. Then we went over to the Applewood stage to see, uh, was it the Bankside stage? What, where's the, um, no, the Applewood stage. We saw the juggling. Then we walked through Armory, Armory Square. And we didn't see anything there. Then I lose track of what we did next, even though we already went through it. Uh, did we go to the parade next? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Then we watched the parade. We walked around, came back up, went to the laundry show. Uh, then went to the puppet puppy. At some point, we walked all the way around to down. I think waiting for the parade to start, we did a lot of walking. Oh, yeah, because there's privies there. And we're trying to find any place you could get a drink or uh, food without waiting in a long line, but that did not necessarily work. And, again, Scooter was like, thank God I'm sober because the lines and the price of alcohol. And then, yeah, so, yeah, that's it. You should check it out or check out your own Renaissance Fair. I know not everyone's different. Uh And it probably is cool uh, when it's, like, in a permanent location just because then they have permanent structures and things. But who knows? Uh, the one, only one we ever went to that was, a Scooter ever went to that was different, I went to it separately than him. That got made into a, a like a housing development. It was up in Novato years and years ago, probably 20 years ago, 15 years ago. That was cool. But anyway, thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks, Alan, for saying hi. And good night from your friend Ray and uh, all the Wildwood players. Good night, everybody. All right. I want to thank uh, all the people that uh, moved over to Sleep With Me Plus from Patreon. Uh, this uh, next round of people, uh, I want to thank Penny, Emily, and Stephen. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks and good night. Emily, uh, Wendy, and Stephen with a PH. First season, Stephen with, with, with a V. Uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Jennifer, Josh, and Justina. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Carol, Richard, and Matthew. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Eric, Jan, and Stephen, PH. Another Stephen. Wow, th- three Stevens already. Uh, the three Stevens is like the three tenors of uh, people that came over from Patreon to sleep with me. Plus, uh, Nathalie, uh, Carol, and Larry. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. Aubrey, Amy S., and Amy L. There you go. Some Amy's in the house now. Uh, thanks. Thanks. And good night. Pam, Elaine, and Bethany. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Alexander, Mateo, and Aaron. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. And Abby and Mike, uh, thanks everybody uh, who supports the show directly, whether it's Sleep With Me Plus or your patron, uh, whether you moved over to Sleep With Me Plus or you're still uh, getting ready to move over, or you support the show on Apple Podcasts or you support our sponsors. That's really how the show, everybody gets a benefit from the show because of you and the actions. You take thousands of people for each one of you that does something. And if you're wondering, hey, I'm not in a position to support the show financially, you could spread the word. Just join our referral program at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. 
uh, R-E-F-E-R, and uh, let people know about the show. You could even, uh, if you refer three people to the show, uh, you could get three months of uh, ad-free episodes of Sleep With Me, six, six people, you get six months, and so on. So uh, get out there and spread the word, and thanks for the support. Thanks, and good night, everybody. All right, everybody, Scoots here talking you in with this month in uh, Sleep With Me Plus, uh, audio news. Uh, we got a referral program going. If you want to sign up for that, you can always do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. I'm going to run through all the content we put out um, this month on Sleep With Me Plus. If you're still waiting to transition on Patreon to Sleep With Me Plus, you got most of this stuff, too. And uh, first, I'm going to start with, uh, like, the the podcast, the bonus uh, podcast uh, on Sleep With Me Plus. And I'm going to go in reverse. So this Saturday, uh, Posty's got a new series that comes out on uh, uh, every other Saturday, just about. And it's called Welcome to Scooterville. And he's re- people are really excited about this. Those are Posty Super Deluxe episodes. Everybody that supports the show gets those in the bonus feed. And they're really fun. They're really cool and really creative. Uh, some people like listening to them during the day. Some people fall asleep to them. On last Thursday, TNG First Contact Part 2 came out for Boar Friends and Boar Besties. And uh, so it was coverage, two, two, uh, two-part coverage in January and February. Bonus episode covering the Star Trek The Next Generation movie Contact, uh, First Contact, excuse me. Uh, then Saturday, uh, oh wait, no, I'm, I'm scrolling too fast, sorry. Um, yeah, then Saturday, February 3rd was another Posty Super Deluxe Welcome to Scooterville episode. And, uh, yeah, that was all, everything in the bonus content feed. I think we got one more bonus set. We got, um, some other stuff coming out. All intro, all night episodes. This is for, uh, Boar Buds and Boar Besties. Uh, it was deep value. And, uh, uh I don't know what the <laughs> Patreon tiers were anymore. Deep value and ultimate value or something. So we had an all-intro episode come out February 8th, uh, and Big Farm in the Sky, P.I., all-night episodes, uh, the six episodes 6 or 13, that was part two, six hours and 18 minutes of Big Farm in the Sky, P.I., and then, yeah, this week, uh, another all-intro episode will come out, another all-intro episode came out on uh, February, January 26th or 28th, I can't read that. Okay, and then the story-only feed and the ad-free feed on Sleep With Me Plus, you know, the, the story-only episodes and the um, ad-free full episodes come out on the same day. So if you're a story-only listener, you get those on the same day. Or if you're, like, you know, making playlists. Um, so let's see. Those are two separate podcasts on Sleep With Me Plus, um, but same content, uh, just... Uh, the story-only versions have no, well, obviously no ads, no theme music, no uh, jingle music, and no thank yous at the end and no intros, just the story-only portion of the episode. Okay, so Sunday, 1239, Dessert Week, that was Great British Bake Off, episode six. Wednesday was Pup Pup Prodigy, our new series, Multiplex, episode one. Uh, February 11th was Wandering Towers, a board game unboxing. There's 1,253 episodes in this feed right now. Um, sorry, I went off topic there. February 7th was uh, Tapestry, which was for Va- v- Valentine's Day in the public feed. And that was um, a TNG, re- like, a, like a repeat of a TNG episode 560. February 4th, Roaring Twenties, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, uh, Episode 5, that's Season 10, Collection 7, uh, 1235, January 31st, uh, was uh, Notebooks of the Journey into the World of Friends. That was a series review, we'll kind of look at the making of that series. January 28th was uh, Romancing the Stone, Tell the Tape, uh, in anticipation of Argyle. Uh, which you still haven't seen yet. Uh, that was uh, 
And then uh, January 24th was Dairy Week, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, Season 10, Collection 7, Episode 4. You can also see kind of we stick at the same kind of rhythm uh, for the most part of uh, a kind of random Trending Tuesday style episode that could be anything, the board game unboxing, tell the tape, uh, personal essay. Then um, we do uh, the written series. So we finished up Journey into World of Friends. Now we're starting Multiplex. Then a TV show recap uh, with Great, Great British Bake Off. And uh, yeah, what else? Uh, I think that's everything. What I record this week? Great question. This ended up being the week of Bring It On, uh, the cheerleading movie from 2000, by kind of by accident. Well, not even kind of by accident, totally by, like, uh, I did an episode I thought was going to be about Crayola crayons. Ended up kind of I'm trying to imagine if there was a role-playing game based on the film that I'd never seen Bring It On, even though I quote the trailer all the time on this podcast. Then I watched over two episodes, uh, bring it on, on mute, uh, and like kind of recorded, kind of like a TV recap episode. And, um, those, uh, like uh, with, with some kind of, like, well, I rented the movie. So two out of two, two, one and a half episodes have good quality closed captioning. But then my uh, rental ran out when I like I, I broke up the second episode into two parts. So the final uh, twenty-five minutes of the show, the movie, I didn't have the best closed captioning. Even though it was mostly action based, it was like the championship. But yeah, I'd never seen. I still never saw it. it's already been brought. In, but uh, I'll, you know, I'll look up the trailer later today just to see. And those will come out, I don't know, right now it's in February. I don't know, those come out March or April. And those will probably come out as TV recaps because we're still recovering, honestly, from the strike. And I'm still a little, um, you know, all the Great British Bake Off episodes we recorded before the strike. Uh, and so I'm still easing my way back into figuring out what our future of uh, TV recap style episodes is. So we have some interim content right now. As I kind of uh, see what I'm comfortable with uh, and is sustainable for the long term of the podcast. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll go from there. And uh, um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I'm uh, glad you're all here. And uh, if you ever want to support the show directly, trying to put these at the end of the public episodes um, just as an experiment so you can kind of get a better idea. Still a sleepy voice. But yeah, if you ever want to check out a seven-day trial at Sleep With Me Plus, it is a huge way to support all the work that goes into the show and make sure the podcast stays sustainable so that you can, you can rely on it and a ton of other people can rely on it. Um, and uh, yeah, you can do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Uh, and then let me know what you think uh, or, or tell me so I can say thank you. Uh, thanks so much and good night.